Uh, so last uh, speaker, Sarah Stewart with Unity Gardens, talk a little bit about, um, tell us you know, what's going on right now uh, with Unity Gardens and maybe some upcoming things that uh, we can start from uh, as we begin thinking about moving forward. So, 10 minutes. I want to make sure we don't have <laughs> feedback here. Um, no one's ever accused me of being too quiet. <laughs> um, I'll share just a brief overview of what Unity Gardens is because um, it, look around the room and most people kind of know. And then I'd like to parallel it with what I um, understand is the transition movement because um, I think there, there are so many ways that everyone in this room can connect with their passion through this template or model um, and together, you know, that makes a really vibrant community. Um, when I first made that garden not so far from here, three blocks um, south of the jail, I had a small idea. I had an idea just to give people access to healthy food that otherwise wouldn't have it. Um, and it's only through many of you in this room and the community at large, um, and maybe a few communication skills on my um, part, that grew what is now known as the Unity Gardens, with over 50 gardens, um, 100 plus free classes for people to connect, not only with healthy food, but to each other. Um, and I think what we've been most successful in is growing community. Um, growing each other and we try to support pretty much every single one of you in the room and a number of people outside in order to do just that um, So as I was listening to Rob and hearing more about transition, of course, I did a little homework um, I like a few things he said about uh, framing it as an experiment an invitation Well, had I known there would be anything like Unity Gardens I would never have had the courage to make a tomato plant um, that would have been very scary, um, but it was an experiment what would happen if people just had access to free food? It goes against everything you know that we know about capitalism and how we share and live together. Um, so, so I think about the email list that went from five people to 1,200 back in 2008, or waving to people in the hood when that scares people, um, and those kind of cultural changes, cultural shifts that we're all here in the room to to pattern in our own way. Um, he said something about a change model, uh, looking at cultural norms and growing differences. Um, sharing free food, really? <laughs> you know, um, that's not really done. But if we don't give people healthy food and the ability to then work on their own accomplishments, as Abraham Maslow said, once you feed the hungry and people get healthier, they can focus on those higher levels of achievement. It's a positive mirror of self as they become part of something bigger than themselves. We've seen that time and time again. Through Unity Gardens, people have uh, found jobs in their connections. Um, they have you know, grown opportunities. We hope to spin off beekeepers and aquaponics and four season growing and those kinds of things as people connect to the things they like. Uh, we certainly don't have that energy to do all those things. We do have the energy to teach those things and empower others. Um, I like what Rob said about the internal investment rather than a plea to help us. Um, the internal investment, connecting with something that matters to us is really, really important. Um, you know, if someone ever offers you a nonprofit startup job, run. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's just not a good deal. Um, but if there's something that is so value laden that you can't not do it, um, the Unity Gardens is everything I was as a parent teaching my kids that it wasn't about just yourself, or as a nurse and instructor creating a community that has the context for wellness, or in my spiritual life as a Buddhist, that we're all connected and that we're only as healthy as those least fortunate. Um, those are the reasons that Unity Garden continues to be my focus, not the reason it continues going, because that's everyone else and the energies of so many people. I like the power of just doing stuff. Uh, those of you that know me, that's kind of self-explanatory. We just do stuff all the time. Um, please look on our website and see that. Um, and then the social technology. This might be where I just thought, oh, he's got me here. Um, when we have a motto saying growing food, growing health, growing community, and growing together, it's not about the food. It never was. It was about growing together, growing each other. Um, because only in that way can we all become better. And I think that's the essence of transition, connecting people to their passions, helping lead the way, um, inspire others to just reach out a little more and not just go home after a, um, your job and watch TV, you know, getting involved. 
Um, and then, then um, the last of the six points I saw Rob put was the um, naivety and the story. That was great. Uh, the question that prompted it, what was your failure? I love that. Because no matter, and, and those of you that know Unity well know that the story is sometimes bigger than any of our little gardens or even our big gardens. That telling the story in a way people can hear, as they all want to be part of the solution. They all want to be part of something that really works. Um, we have a homeless gentleman, um, Johnny, who many of you have met either through the story or picture, who watered our Ravina Park garden every single week in 2011. That is his life accomplishment. That is part, as he's walking outside all the time, of what he carries within him in pride. We all have that piece, something that just needs to be ignited, something took me till I was 50 you know, years old. Um, the theme of resilience is a community health and ecological term, so I look at that as the grand finale. And just to give you a little um, snippet of what Unity Gardens is up to now, rather than just growing food and growing education, um, we are starting and embarking in our four season growing. We've got our first growing hoop up, hope to have the second one up before March. Um, we're doing beekeeping. Um, we are starting aquaponics in an educational sense. Um, we have worked with uh, partners for off-the-grid energy. Um, that includes biochar, solar, radiant heat to heat the greenhouse, which actually still has stuff growing today. Uh, it's all an experiment for right now. And recapturing food waste, which we're doing in partnership with the Food Bank of Northern Indiana and three different coffee shops to do our composting, which we have about seven different composting templates out at the Big Garden at LaSalle Square. So we're real excited uh, about those things. Uh, we are hoping that in our four season growing, we can grow jobs, which as Rob said, then all of a sudden it's a no brainer. Um, you know, it's one thing to grow free food for folks and help encourage participation. It's another thing to really uh, be a template for economic revitalization, and that's where we're looking um, to go.